Hi, it's Jeremiah Taylor with Keller Williams Realty coming to you today with another short real estate investing clip. Now, with the property that we broke down in a longer video that many of you have already seen, this is a short excerpt that talks about some of the tools that we use as agents in the MLS. Now, the great news is whether you're an agent or a consumer, uh, you have access to a lot of information today. And if you can understand how to analyze and go through that information, uh, you can do a lot of the same analysis that we do using the MLS tools. So check out this short video that's gonna show you how we break down and analyze this property to determine whether or not it's a good investment uh, and kind of give ourselves our exit strategy. And you'll see in this one, we actually had two exit strategies, which is what I prefer to do when we're going to flip a property. I always like to know that we also have a, a second way out. So. Uh, check out the short video, like, subscribe, share on YouTube, and uh, check out the full-length version too. I think you'll learn something. Thanks so much. It's Jeremiah Taylor here at Keller Williams Realty. How do we know this is a good deal, right? So you can see this, like obviously it looks like there's some opportunity here. How do you figure out how much? So I'll show you how. So, you know, as a realtor, we have some pretty cool tools. So I can actually search by the MLS number, run a quick little radius around that pretty dense part of town so we'll go like a half mile I really want to see what's pending and closed and you know I hit search and it goes right now it's gonna go find me everything within a half mile of there that's pending or closed and it's gonna return all those results now as it does that I've got to start to filter this down and so what you're gonna see is that as I filter I want to filter by the number of bedrooms that we have here so bedroom so we'll just go bed uh, and it's going to give me the option to filter by that momentarily all right so let's take a look at how we knew whether or not this was going to be a good deal deal so as a realtor we have access to some pretty cool tools here so all i'm going to grab is just do what's called an mls number search run a quick little radius this is a pretty populous part of town so the comps shouldn't be more than like a half mile out uh in fact i'd be suspect if if we even had to really go that far out. So I just ran a quick search, half mile around that listing, 1,491 results. So obviously we got to narrow that down. Uh, what we really care about here is just residential. Um, and then within residential, I really only want to see things that are pending or sold in the last 90 days. Now, granted, we did this transaction several months ago, um, but this will still give you an idea of how we run this analysis. So then within that, um, I want to know how many bedrooms does it have and I want to know how many bathrooms does it, does what I'm looking at have because this is a two bed two bath and that's really not going to be comfort I'm sorry two bed one bath that's not really going to be comfortable and I'm, I just keep saying two it's a three bed one bath not going to be comfortable comparable to like three twos or three or three two or two twos or anything else so we want to get as close as we can and then the uh, the last thing we really want to look at is year built because this place was built in the 60s. So I just, I don't want to really look at any newer construction stuff. So we'll limit to 1980. Check it out. We're all the way down to 10. It's like magic. I've been doing this a little while. And so here's our comps. So we know, um, you know, here's 180 all the way down to 140. Here's our sale at 145. But then when you go over here and you look, these are like 1200, 1100, 1290. So these couple that are like 1,200 square feet, we actually want to throw those out because they're a little bit too big for what I would call comparable. Um, so then I'm just going to go in here, go to combined square feet. And let's just cap this at like 1,100. And there we go. We got eight comps. Um, it's a pretty clean little comp list. So now let's just look at it as like a, what we call a one-line CMA. And so what this tells me is... Um, you know, here we go. So we can see these are all solds. There's really nothing active in that area, which you'll see, like I have this set to filter for actives and there aren't any. That's a pretty strong indicator that there's high demand for this property type in this area. Um, but of all these clothes, you'll see the range is like 125 to 180. Uh, now that 180, I thought we threw that guy out, but we didn't. So that's actually like a pretty recent new high comp after we sold ours. We, we sold ours uh, on 8.7. Uh, so it actually, that one closed just before ours. So then this is where I would just start to dig into some of these. So I'm going to click over to the property detail and I'm going to go look at them, see what made them sell for what they sold for. Okay, so this is 180. 
Um, this guy's way buried up here in the neighborhood. Keep on mind, we're on a major street, so that one's going to sell for more than ours. Um, I want to see this one that sold here. So this guy sold for 140. Um, they bought it for 45,093. You know, going south of 22nd, values are generally a little lower, so that's 109. So I'm probably not too concerned about that. Um, yeah, I got this guy at 165. I got this one at 145. So let's take a look at this one. I'm curious what it looks like. Um, you know, cute picture. I'm looking to see like has it so there's a floor plan. Looks like it's been cleaned up, but it's not a full remodel. It's clean, but it's not a full remodel. So you know what I'm kind of looking at here is between the comps. What I'm seeing here, you know, there's a value range. It looks like the low side's about 100, but I'm gonna throw that out because it's on the wrong side of 22nd. Uh, really close to this major freeway and a bunch of train stuff. So if we get rid of that one, our value range is really like 140 to 180. I know 180 is kind of high because that's buried up here in the neighborhood and the, this is a super nice place. Um, you know, this, this one now obviously has been fully remodeled. So what this tells me is if I'm buying this place at 68,000, right? Um, and I'm going to jump back over to the original listing that we bought this on. It's at 68,000. Uh, if my exit is going to be somewhere between 140 and 180, now keep in mind these values have even gone up since the time that we bought it. I'm looking at this saying this is a total rehab. Like I probably got to do roof, mechanicals, plumbing. Like it's going to need everything. So pretty safe number here in Tucson is 50 bucks a square foot. So I'm going to say it's 991 square feet. If I'm going to spend $50 a square feet, that means I'm basically going to spend 50 grand. So if I buy it for 68, I put 50 in. I'm in it at 138. Um, the deal works because the worst case is I'm going to make a little bit of money, not a lot, if I sell it in the 140s. So that's enough for me to say, hey, let's go tie it up. Let's, you know, let's see if we can put something together. It's really not going to cost me 50000 to rehab. That's absolute worst case scenario. Um, so we put it under contract and we went. We walked it, we did our inspections, and um, as we did those inspections, which by the way, that's the beauty of buying these deals on the MLS, is you have the right to inspect, even though it's all jacked up. House has been on the market for 440 days. They're okay with us taking five days to do some inspections, get some contractors through, and bid it out. Mm -hmm.